Hi, this is Joseph Tan here from GoodMonday.com. We are working up the list of the top 10 most threatening unresolved organizational issues as stated by authors Roger Connors and Tom Smith. So we have covered program mitis, cross-functional strife, senior management development, poor performance, work and personal life balance, entitlement, misalignment, and for this particular segment, we're going to deal with the whole issues of empowerment. Now, empowerment is one of those management cliches which sounds good, but when you actually try to practice it, it can actually look quite different from its intended uh, focus. For example, empowerment could be used to actually disguise someone playing the blame game. For example, I could say, well, I've delegated it to so-and-so to get it done. I've empowered him to get it done. And why didn't he do it the way that he should do it? He has the power to do it. So why should I interfere? He should do it and get it done regardless. He is empowered. But because of this wrong understanding of this term empowerment, it is actually a subtle disguise for playing the blame game. So how do we get out of the blame game and understand the true intention of what empowerment really is all about? How then does one apply empowerment in the organization? There are three ways by which you can apply empowerment and this makes sure that you stay on the straight and narrow. First of all, empowerment means we empower an employee or empower a person with the right level of authority. There is no point to say, well, I empower you to make the customer happy, but there is no delegate authority to make things happen. For example, if the client complains of a lousy service or he or she is not happy with a particular product or pricing that is given, is the employee empowered to make quick decisions based on a reasonable level of delegated authority? If this employee every time have got to say, well, let me check with the boss. Well, let me check with the supervisor. There is no power to execute. And the lack of power to execute does not translate into customer satisfaction. So empowerment is reasonable authority delegated in order for quick executional decision to be made for a client's satisfaction. Secondly, empowerment is about power with clear expectations. It is alarming to note that according to Gallup, workers in the US, 50% of workers in the US come to work not knowing clearly what is expected of them. 50% meaning there are a lot of employees out there which whom are very busy but they are not sure whether if their busyness or activities which they perform is in line with the boss's expectations. So to empower someone means that you must communicate clearly what is expected because expectations is the number one killer of relationships because if expectation is not communicated clearly, then the delivery is not clear and if expectation is not clear and delivery uh, doesn't come according to expectations, it leads uh, into a lot of angry situation and also situation of conflict and that is, necess that is ne definitely not empowering. So empowering means clear expectations being communicated. Thirdly, empowerment means empowerment with support. It is not just a matter of uh, delegation and communication but once things are delegated and it is communicated, there is the ongoing matter of support. Uh, and without support and, uh, and guidance and coaching, uh, whatever that has been communicated may be done the first time, but what if the employee comes across an obstacle or a roadblock? If you take a look at it, um, empowerment with authority and empowerment with expectations, uh, these are merely events. Okay, I empower you with this level of authority. I communicate uh, these expectations clearly to you. So it is an event. However, in order to 
ensure that there is sustainability support comes in and support is not an event it is a process in fact it is a process that leads into building a strong relationship between the two parties empowerment with support ensures that there is accountability because support is a bi-directional word uh, you tell me what you need and i will support you and give you the materials and resources in order for you to do a good job so while authority and expectations is about focusing on the task, empowerment with support focuses on the trust. The trust and the bond and the, and the team building that takes place within the context of empowerment with support. So authority and expectations keep things going. The support keep things strong and sustainable. So the next time you feel yourself having the urge to empower someone, well, hold it. Ask yourself this question. Am I empowering with delegation of reasonable authority? Am I empowering by communicating expectations clearly? And finally, am I empowering by giving ongoing support that leads into a relationship of trust and engagement? So when it is done from this three angle, your empowerment will truly be empowering and you will avoid playing the blame game. Think about it. This is Joseph Tan here from goodmonday.com. Thanks for watching.